This is Josh with another Bitcoin and blockchain tutorial available at chaintuts.com. And today we're going to be talking about elliptic curve cryptography. And we're going to be talking about why this form of cryptography is used in cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. This isn't going to be a super technical deep dive into ECC, but we're going to talk about the basics of this form of public key cryptography and why it's useful for applications like Bitcoin. So first, we need to talk about why public key cryptography and what is it? When we normally transact with each other in today's financial systems, we use trusted intermediaries. So for example, if you send a friend money via PayPal, that transaction is routed through PayPal's corporation and they do the legwork of determining that you have the amount of money that you can send to them and that that money that they receive gets credited to their account at the end of the day. This model fundamentally relies on trust in those centralized institutions. But with purely peer-to-peer -peer systems like Bitcoin, we need to use something else to determine who owns what and how they can prove that they own what without relying on those trusted institutions. And so part of the system is the use of public key cryptography, which is a form of provable mathematics implemented in software. Fundamentally, what public key cryptography is used for is to prove the ownership of something private, in this case a secret or private key, without ever having to reveal what that private key is. This is sort of in contrast with symmetric uh, cryptography systems where, for example, if you wanted to send somebody an encrypted message, you might have to pre-share a secret key with them. In public key systems, you never have to reveal your secret key. This is done asymmetrically. So you give a public key, and that public key and what is called a digital signature can be used to mathematically prove that you are the rightful owner of the private key without you ever having to share it. So let's talk about a really simple example. Let's say that you just really love Bitcoin and you want to share with the world the message, I love Bitcoin. But you want to prove that this message that you have shared on social media is really the exact message that you are sending. You wouldn't want somebody, for example, to hijack that message uh, using some kind of man in the middle attack to be able to change the message to, you know, I don't think Bitcoin is very good. That would, that would stink. So what you would do is you would pre-share your public key with everyone. Now, ensuring that everybody gets the right public key and not a fraudulent one is an important problem in cryptography that's beyond the scope of this example. So let's say for the purposes of this exercise that everyone has your true and rightful public key that you have shared with them. You would then do what is called a digital signature using your private or secret key. You would digitally sign the message, I love Bitcoin, and then you would provide everybody you wanted to share that message with uh, the actual message, so I love Bitcoin, and this long string of bits that is called the digital signature. Everyone would already have your public key, um, but it is interesting to note for you cryptography nerds out there that you don't even have to share the public key necessarily. The public key can be derived from the digital signature itself. It's not really important to know for the purposes of this basic thought exercise but you've now given everyone this message and this digital signature with your public key. Now, what anyone in the world can do with this information is provably mathematically verify that you have signed this message, I love Bitcoin, with your private key. What you have essentially done is proven that you are the rightful owner of the secret key without revealing what the secret key is. So this is a really, really useful tool for a wide variety of purposes. In fact, public key cryptography is used uh, most commonly well beyond the scope of Bitcoin in things like uh, TLS certificates that are used to secure your browser, or even uh, email encryption using PGP or another technology. 
But let's talk about what public key cryptography and specifically elliptic curves are used for in the Bitcoin system. Every Bitcoin address, which is sort of like an account for Bitcoin, uh, starts with a randomly generated private key. So in modern wallets, these are actually derived from a randomly generated seed phrase, and these serve as that secret, uh, public, uh, secret elliptic curve key. The address is then derived using the elliptic curve algorithm through a public key and then some hashes, and you receive Bitcoin at this address. So if you wanted to send me some Bitcoin, I would give you my public address, which is a form of an encoded public key. And now in the Bitcoin system, when you send that transaction to me, I now own Bitcoin at that address. And what that means is my private key controls that Bitcoin. Now, if I want to go to send that Bitcoin to someone else, say another friend, I create a new transaction using my wallet software. And what I do is I sign that transaction digitally, just like in our basic example with the message, I love Bitcoin. Instead, the message is a specially uh, constructed transaction that is broadcast to the rest of the Bitcoin network using specific construction rules. So I've created a transaction sending you, say, 0.5 Bitcoin for your birthday, and I have digitally signed that transaction using my private key. So now everyone else on the peer-to-peer -peer Bitcoin network can verify that I am the rightful owner of that Bitcoin that I received at my address. And that's because I have digitally signed using my secret key for that address. I never have to reveal that private key, ever. All I do is I reveal the public key in that transaction along with the digital signature and that uh, digital signature uh, also includes the message data of the Bitcoin transaction. So anyone on the network can now prove that I was the rightful original owner of that 0.5 Bitcoin and that transaction is now transferring ownership to your Bitcoin address and so on and so forth down the line as that Bitcoin is spent Every person that creates a new transaction digitally signs that using their private keys and proves to the network that they are the rightful owner of that Bitcoin. So let's talk a little bit about why elliptic curves specifically. Public key cryptography is not limited to elliptic curve algorithms. And in fact, elliptic curves may not even be the most popular form. One of the most well-known forms of elliptic uh, or uh, public key algorithms, rather, is RSA. Now, RSA is another type of public key crypto system that can be used for everything from TLS certificates to uh, message signing to smart cards and all sorts of public key applications. But there are some specific advantages to the use of elliptic curve cryptography over other forms like RSA in a system like Bitcoin, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, or Ethereum. And one of those specific advantages is the number of bits needed for uh, the private keys in order to provide a equivalent amount of security against, uh, say, brute force attacks against the system. An RSA key of 3,072 bits is equivalent to an elliptic curve private key of only 256 bits. Now, this amount of bits is, is not very much in terms of modern computer storage, right? I mean, you can have a hard drive full of terabytes of information that costs maybe $50. But in a system like Bitcoin, all this information is being constantly added to the blockchain in the form of these digital signatures. So uh, when it comes to the amount of data that has to constantly be transferred across networks and stored in hard drives on fully validating nodes, ECDSA offers a clear advantage. So for every digital signature, instead of having to include a 6,000 some bit public key along with the signature data, you only have to include a 512 bit public key along with the signature data. This dramatic reduction in size of the, um, the signature data really adds up over time when we're talking about a uh, global monetary system 
where thousands of transactions are being added to the blockchain each day. So that provides a very, very clear advantage over other systems like RSA. You know, again, 3,072 versus 256 might not seem like much, but when we're talking about thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of transactions being added to the Bitcoin blockchain, that size difference really adds up. And so elliptic curves are really helpful in that regard. So let's talk a little bit about the security of this type of model. Uh, and you know, we're not going to go deep into uh, the crypto system security, but uh, suffice it to say that researchers have shown that modern elliptic curve algorithms like the one used in Bitcoin, which is SecP256K1 curve, are uh, very secure, mathematically proven. And so let's talk about the security of this kind of, moder uh, this kind of model more broadly. What's so advantageous about this type of system is that we never have to reveal secrets in order to transact with other people. We only ever have to reveal public information in the form of digital signatures. So when I create a Bitcoin transaction, all I'm doing is revealing my public key and signing a transaction at my address. Contrast this with the legacy system of credit cards. Every time you use your credit card at a merchant, you give them a secret piece of information, which is your credit card number. And you have to trust that every single merchant that uh, stores this information will A, not uh, charge more to your credit card than you authorize them to, and B, not leak that credit card information to thieves and hackers. So this system, in my opinion, is fundamentally broken and it's held together with the duct tape of bank fraud departments and uh, hope that merchants will not reveal your information and having to get new credit cards uh, numbers all the time when your credit cards are eventually hacked. With the Bitcoin system, as long as you keep your private keys safe, you're safe, your money is safe. And you never have to trust anybody else with this secret information. So using this public key crypto system in a peer-to-peer -peer manner, is a fundamentally more secure model for doing transactions. We're relying on proven, studied, and uh, you know, important algorithms that are tested, researched, and have people trying to break them every day in the form of security research. So using this type of system allows us to uh, get past a more legacy model that relies on trust. So this has been kind of a non-technical introduction to public key crypto systems and specifically elliptic curves and how they're used in cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. As always, there is an article on the Chain Tutorials website that accompanies this tutorial if you'd like to read and learn that way. And as always, I want to thank you very much for listening and learning something new with me today.